shall please open our Bibles to Revelation chapter 4. We are going to read from verses 1 to 11. Shall we? Can we please have it on the screen? New King James Version. Revelations 4. Revelation 4. Praise the living God. Can please all rise to celebrate the word of God? We're going to read it together. Shall we start? After these things are lifted, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. And the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne, and he who sat there was like a jasper and a savage stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne in appearance like an emerald. Around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting, clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Before the throne there was a sea of glass like crystal. And in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures full of eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second living creature like a calf, the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. The four living creatures, each having six wings, were full of eyes around and within, and they do not rest day or night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory and honor and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, you are worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For you created all things, and by your will they exist and we are created. May God bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. Shall we please be seated. Hallelujah to Jesus. God wanted to give Apostle John a new experience begin a new thing in the life of apostle john god wanted to move apostle john to the proper reason for which he was called praise the living god god wanted to do a new thing in the life of apostle john and in the life of the church of the living god hallelujah and before god would do it at John's present level, it was not possible. Praise the living God. At John's present level of attitude, of altitude, of vision, of understanding, of anointing, whatever, at John's present level, it couldn't have been done. If God passed that fire or that power through John in his present level, John will be, will, will, will be smitten to ashes. Praise the living God. 
And what did God do? He says, come up here. Come up here. Come up here. God wanted to use John to solve a huge problem. To declare the, the end, the beginning and the end of mankind. When he did it with Moses, Moses come up to the mountain. Because Moses at his present level could not handle the revelation and the power God was going to pass through him. And he said, Moses, come up, up to the mountain. Then God dictated the first five books of the Bible to Moses. Things that happened thousands of years before Moses was born. God showed Moses, dictated them, taught him how to write them, and he wrote them and recorded them. He called him when he wanted to give him the Ten Command. He called him up to the mountain. Come up here. Come up here. Come up here. This message I'm giving, I'm, I'm delivering this morning. I didn't have to spend time to prepare it because it's. It's an experience God has been dealing with me for some time. I've been asking him a lot of questions. And when yesterday, Pastor Yu said I was going to preach, or two days ago, he told me I was going to preach this morning. She told me I was going to preach this morning. And I asked God, what do you want me to talk about? They don't go and do any plenty of research. What I've been dealing with you in your quiet time, in your private time, in your experience with me in the past, in the recent past, I want you to share it. Praise the living God. So I'm just trying to share with you this morning what I've been going through. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Praise the living God. Amen. He says to John, come up here in the name of Jesus. Somebody here this morning, God is telling you by this message, if you don't get anything, get this one. Come up here. Come up here. What you're going through, or the purpose of your life, or whatever you are experiencing, or the challenges you're experiencing, or the purpose of your life which you don't even understand fully now, God is saying that you cannot pull through at the present level you are in now, at your present level of revelation, at your present level of commitment, at your present level of understanding, at your present level of commit of of, 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 of of operation, he says, come up here. Praise the living God. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. He says, come up here. And I will show you things. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. God is telling somebody here, come up here. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Come up here and I will show you things. Come up here and I will show you things. I don't know somebody who has been asking God a lot of questions. You have a lot of things that need answers. You have situations that need solutions. And in your present circumstance, you are asking God one or two questions. God is telling you this morning, come up here. Amen. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. Come up here. Hallelujah to Jesus. I know one person in this congregation right now that is in this situation, and that person is me. And if you identify with me in this situation, I want you to shout hallelujah. hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Says, come up here. He's not calling you to come and just relax. He's not come, calling you to come and just look. He says, I will show you things. I have things I want to know, God. 
I have things I want to know. I am deficient in knowledge in many areas. I am deficient in understanding. I need to know quite a bit. Therefore, Father, in the name of Jesus, draw me nearer. Amen. The songwriter says, draw me nearer. Draw me nearer to you, O God. Draw me nearer to you, O God. Repraba shetaraba in the name of Jesus. And do you know one funny thing? Jesus said, Nobody comes to me except the Father draws him. So when he says, Come up, he's the author and the finisher. He's the person calling you to come up. And he's the person who will draw you up. Praise the living God. Now, what is our requirement? What is our rule in all these things? If somebody wants to draw you up, if you want to carry a child up, let's say Uriel, you want to carry Uriel up now, and you say Uriel, you, by the time you do your hand like this, or if Uriel wants you to carry him up, if Uriel wants the father to carry him up, he will go to the father without saying anything, he will lift up his hand. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Once he lifts up his hand, his, his father will pick him up. Hallelujah to Jesus. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Why is God telling us to come up here? He was a scientist. Einstein. And for... Einstein was a practicing Christian. The, the world may not want you to know it, but Einstein was a practicing Christian. And from his research and experience and everything, he made one statement. He said a problem cannot be solved at the same level it was created. Praise the living God. Hallelujah, Hallelujah to Jesus. That was an experience of a, an aircraft pilot. They were transporting some snakes and the snakes were put in a compartment and put in the luggage compartment of the aircraft. And somehow the, um, the, the crew noticed that the compartment, the, the cage of the, where they put the snakes, that it wasn't well locked, that the snakes had escaped, and there were passengers in the aircraft, and they were now, they, they now noticed that if car is not taken, that the snakes are beginning to um, crawl into the main cabin, passenger cabin of the aircraft, and they had um, a problem and they told the pilot the pilot radioed the tower to ask them for advice and they told the pilot take the aircraft higher that there is an altitude you get to the snakes will become kind of paralyzed Praise the living God. And stay in that altitude until you're ready to land. That they will be contained. They will never get into the cabin. Wherever they are, that when, they, when it gets to that altitude, the snakes will become paralyzed. Praise the living God. Brethren, come up here. There is an altitude you will get to God. Your problems will feel so into insignificance. Amen. Praise the living God. Amen. In the presence of God, there is fullness of joy, which means there is absence of sorrow. Praise the living God. Hallelujah to Jesus. Another pilot had turbulence. And the turbulence was serious and he couldn't handle it. He called the tower. The tower said, go higher. If you go higher, the turbulence will cease. 
you will go above the turbulence. So when God is saying, come up higher, somebody in this congregation this morning, by this by, 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 by heeding this call of coming up higher, you will ride above your storms. In the name of Jesus, Amen. you will ride above the storms of unbelief. Amen. You will be lifted up in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus, you will be lifted up Amen. above sin, above sorrow, above depression above sickness, above failure, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Practical example. When you got born again, there are some things you battled with. Some of us were smokers. Some of us had one addiction or the other. But the time you genuinely got born again, some of us, our anger was uncontrollable. Some of us, it was even physical sickness. And by the time you got born again, and you keep feeding yourself with the word of God, and you keep getting higher and higher and higher and higher with God, after some time, you cannot even put your finger on a date when you stopped smoking. You cannot put your finger on a date when you stop, you, you just look, stop certain things that would have angered you and made you to almost kill somebody in the past few months. Now somebody does it to you and it's like nothing. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah to Jesus. Amen. On, during the week, I was at the airport to see off Pastor Fred and they directed us to a counter and there was this young woman you know she came to check in her mother and apparently she's an evil girl and she had a child and um, I think she had excess and they told her to go and reduce her excess and so that, um, that we should come and check in and she refused to leave the counter and I was there and I had it, I was pushing a trolley and I told her, I said, please, we want to check in. That was all. <laughs> she just exploded. That she too, that uh, she, 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 she stopped playing here. She too was, and they, they had told her to move. Then I didn't answer her. I just stood there and I was smiling. And she was ranting and ranting. You old people, after you said that that is what makes some of us young people will be. Really? Will be. I said, Who told you you are young? You have a child. You say you're young. I remember. I was just laughing in my. And I didn't say anything. Then they, they came again and told her, Madam, please. Okay, you go to the next one. The next one became free. They told her that she now faced those people. Why should I be the person to move to the next one? And I laughed. And I was there. Then Pastor Fred's wife turned and looked at me. I said, no, that she met a wrong customer today. <laughs> Praise the living God. Hallelujah. But I knew myself. If it was before, we will settle it. I will tell her certain things she will not forget quickly. <laughs> Praise the living God. So that when next she comes to the airport, she will know how to behave. As you come closer to God. I listened to Pastor Kule Oshikule say, You are like that you become what you worship. You become like what you worship. Said that his son asked him, Why do we have to do either his son or his daughter asked him, Why do we always have to worship God? Does it mean that God likes vainglory or he likes people to puff him up? He says, No. God gave him wisdom. He said he thought, What will I tell this child now? Because normally when we preach um, praise and worship, we say you have to worship God just like you are praising a king and the king is now doling out money and uh, all that. When you praise somebody, like musicians, when they praise you and you dole out money, so when you praise God that he doles out, that, that makes God look like vainglory or like 
He said that, you, that that child has already covered that angle. So what do I have to tell her now? Say so God gave you wisdom. Say that you become like whatever you worship. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. When you come closer to God and you worship him, you begin to become like him. You begin to have his powers. You begin to do the things, the thing the way he thinks. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. And it can only happen by coming up here. Hallelujah to Jesus. This message came to me. I was thinking about certain things about Christianity, about our role, about the effect of Christianity. How are we going to affect this society? How are we going to touch this society? How are we going to affect the people around us? Our neighbors, how are they going to how are we going to affect them? It's difficult to, to, to preach to you. You see them every day. At times they want to greet you, at times they don't want to greet you. They don't even give you an audience to start discussing and familiarizing so that you can even chip in something. And how are we going to affect you know nobody wants to talk to you, nobody wants to nobody has time for you, you know. But if you go to the bar. If you ever go to any pub, they have time for themselves. You know, there was a time I traveled with, um, with Pastor Yu to Isle of Wight. And we went there. The only restaurants they have are in pubs. So we went to eat. And they were all very friendly. They were ready to chat with us. You know? These are, you hardly see any black person there. For all the time we spent there, I don't think we saw the two or it was only one black family when we went, you know? But, but, but the typical, that is the heartland of the, but they say the people of this land, they don't greet people. It's not true. They were, they were very jovial. They wanted to know about us. They served us well. Other people who came to the pub, they were very... In fact, if you're passing and you see them tending their garden, they will want, if you greet them, say good morning with them. If you say good morning with them, it's not enough. They want to engage you in a discussion. Praise the living God. So when it is amongst them, they are very jovial. They are very, they, they, they interact. But when you now bring in Christianity, when we go out for evangelism here, nobody wants to, talk. once they see you, one day we went there, they were, they were, they wanted to drop, they said, don't drop anything there. <laughs> they were having like a gathering and you know, somewhere there, you know. And they were there, we, we, they greeted, and I wanted, don't drop anything there. They interrupted the drinking and, the, and, their, and their enjoyment to, to warn me not to drop anything there. How do we reach these people? These were the things that were worrying me. And I said, the, but God told me the solution. If you cannot kill them, you cannot force them, you cannot change them, but you can draw nearer to God and be more like Him. Smi Wigglesworth made a made progress. Yeah, in fact, BBC was running a documentary on Smi Wigglesworth two nights ago. Praise the living God. And interviewed his granddaughter, who is now has the ministry in South Africa, and traced it to Bradford and to Leeds, where he was born. Why he drew near to God. God told him, come up here. And he came up. Brethren, the hope for this church, the hope for us as Christians to make him part, is to come up here. In this dispensation, our children, this generation, the only thing they can, the only thing that, that, that they can, um, respond to. The only thing that can catch their attention is the raw power of God. Praise the living God. No amount of stories. They've seen, they've heard stories, they've heard, they've seen things on the internet, 
they've, what they've seen at the age of 10, some of us didn't see at the age of 45. So there is nothing you can, except the raw power of God. Even the children you are living with in the house, if you can ever come to their level and allow them to tell you what they know, you will be dazed. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So for us, as Christians, if we ever want to make an impact, we have only one choice left. Our parents and other people, they have many choices left. For example, in Africa, then, the only way you can go to school was a mission, was through the missionaries. Mm -hmm. So once you go to their school, they will teach you the Lord's Prayer, you will pray the Bible, you will learn Psalm 123 without considering anything. Nobody wants to know. If you don't learn it, they will kill you, and you will learn it by force. <laughs> Praise the living God. Now you can't kill anybody. Now the thing has been banned in schools. Now what do you do? So in the dispensation where now, for example, evangelism, back home, if you want to, if even in Africa today, if you have food and you have ordinary food, just food alone, and you want to do evangelism, you can win 1,000 souls in one hour. Praise the living God. I've gone for evangelism. I've gone for evangelism back home, and I will speak. And everybody there, 100%, they will all raise their hands. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When we finished by that Greek crusade, Pastor was sending um, Bo Brother Bola Jackie Sawyer and I to the to the um, Oba of Badagri, his palace, the day they will hold palace meeting. Because of the power of God, the Oba saw at the crusade, he said all the bad people in town, all the witches and wizards that came to that, that they were all, that, he, that they knew them, all the troublemakers, that they were all slain in that crusade, that they were all, they were trying to run away and they were falling down. They saw the power of God disgrace all of them in that crusade. After that, he said that all those wicked people were disgraced. Therefore, that we should be coming to his palace meeting when he was holding meeting with his chiefs. We'll come and pray with them in the morning. We'll come and pray with them before they enter the, 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 the cabinet meeting. And Bolaji and Kisoy and I, we will go there because Bolaji was the man's classmate in school. So I will speak. And when you finish, all those chiefs, all of them, even with their whatever they are, food, all of them, once you make altar call, all of them will raise. Because if you don't raise your hand, it means that you are one of those wicked people <laughs> that we came because of. Praise the Lord. So we notice that every every time we go there, every month we go there, and they say, if you, have, if you want to give your life to Jesus, raise your hand. All of them, because the upper invited us, number one, number two, we were invited because of the wicked people that were disgraced. So if you don't raise your hand, you are one of the wicked people. All of them will raise their hand. Praise the living God. All oh, because somebody answered the call of God. Somebody like Pastor Taiwo answered the call of God and came up here. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. And people saw the raw power of God. And as I thought about our mission here and the mission of this church, and the way I said, I don't have to wait for anybody again. If it is prayer meeting, if it is only me, I will come. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. Because the, during the days of Sweet Nigel's work, this country was not a godly country. No. They said people would go and get drunk and they would kill. They would do all sorts of things. You know? But the man shook this place because he alone answered the call and came up here and many people came with him. Praise the living God. Hallelujah. 
If it is prayer meeting, you will come. Where